at Spruce Remue by a drone. I was just going to do a quick little assembly video for the Torker 210. The assembly instructions will be the same for the 180 as it is for the 210. Uh, in your kit, you're going to get a rear arm, a front arm. This is going to be your divider for the rear wall where you can mount your video transmitter and your uh, transmitter receiver. These are going to be your camera plates, a top plate, a bottom plate, your middle plate. And you're also going to get the snazzy hardware kit that's going to have your 35 millimeter standoffs, a 4 millimeter standoff, some lock nuts for your motors, some lock nuts for the arms, and some uh, 3 millimeter by, I believe these are 8 millimeter screws, some longer screws, I think these are 11 millimeters, some custom standoffs. You should get eight of the nylon nuts, four nylon screws, a piece of foam to help your battery stay on, and then the u bad strap. Uh, what I would start with is, uh, like I said, the kit comes with all this stuff. The first thing that I would do is I would start with the um, uh, middle plate here. Let me grab it. So this middle plate is what I would start with. The reason I would start with this is because you're going to want to get your nylon screws and put these in place first. The reason you want to do this first is because you don't have access to this part once the frame is assembled. So I would get these on and how we recommend it is one screw and then a nut. Once the nut's on there. Uh, do that to the rest. Alright, so you've got those screws on there. Once those are on there, I would go ahead and put the, at least do the middle standoffs. This is another spot that once you put the bottom plate on, you're not going to have access to getting the screws in the middle of the frame. So I would go ahead and put these standoffs on. Um, so you would need four of them. This you're going to use the smaller of the screws. So that'll go in, obviously, from the bottom. We got two more out of here. So at least with these on there, you still have access to um, these ones once everything's together, so it doesn't really matter much. Um, from this point here, you I mean, this is just a quick dry assembly so you can see where all the nuts and bolts go. How you put your electronics components on it and stuff like that, that's going to be up to you. However, this is the basic um, assembly instructions. Uh, once you do that, then you can move on to the... Um, rear arms or you can move on to the um, uh, front arms it doesn't matter which order you do it what you'll notice is the arms are notched so that the let me grab this camera here so you'll notice that the arms are notched so you can only put those on one way so it's not like you're going to assemble it backwards and same with the front arms the front arms are notched also so that you can fit the um, screws on there uh, so once you get these on then you like I said you don't have to do this one you can um, put the bottom plate on top of it get one of the longer of the screws and some people like to go from the top down or the bottom down it doesn't really matter just get that screw in there and then you're going to want to use one of the smaller lock nuts that comes with it these are the M3 lock nuts so if you lose one, that's what you'll need is an M3. I'm not going to lock that down for now, just for we can get this video done. Grab one more screw. 
grab the other lock nut, stick it through there. And there you go, it's, it's down. Now, the one thing you'll see also now is you'll still have access to the screws. So if the standoff does start to get loose, then you can still stick your Allen head in there and, and uh, hold that screw down so you can tighten down the, the standoff. And you can also do that for the, the more front ones that are um, blocked by the plate. Now, grab the front arms. Even once this is together and you have the standoffs up here, this front arm will still be able to slide through here. You'll just kind of want to slide it through like a boomerang. So, so you can see that it's still functional. I'll, I'll just do the front standoffs real quick so you can see that. Um, what you're going to want to do is get one of these 4 millimeter standoffs that we had custom made for the frame. Just put it in there. Grab another one of the longer of the screws. That's going to slide through there. I have some tweezers somewhere that I usually use to help me out. Um, let me just try to line it up with this guy. There we go. So that'll drop in there, stick out through, and then you can grab your standoff and, and then stick it on here. What I'm doing this for is just to essentially show you how you can replace an arm if it does happen to break. They should be pretty rigid. Uh, they are four millimeter carbon fiber, so um, they should be pretty strong arms. Just pinch this apart a little bit, slide that screw in there. And there you have it. Um, grab one more standoff, throw it on there. So now you'll see that you can't really pry this open. But like I said, there is enough space in here. You'll have to stick it in. Um, sorry. I just want to stick it in here. You can just spread it apart just a little bit. Oh my goodness. So anyways, spread it apart a little bit. The arms will slide in there. So if you do have to make a field repair, these arms will come out and you can replace it without having to take apart the entire frame. Once you have that in there, it's going to be the same long bolts that um, that you used before. Stick one in there. Stick one in there. And then you're going to want to put your, put your lock nuts on. Of course, that one fell out because I didn't have it secured, but And then you'll tighten those down and your frame will be locked in. Now obviously the, um, we'll just put these last two on real quick. Drop that in there. Grab one more standoff. So that's the basic premise behind that, the bottom part of the, the frame. Now you're going to want to go ahead and get all your electronics installed. All of your motors, the motors are cut out to allow 1806s for like the 180 or the 210 if you want to put an 1806 on it. It's got the smaller notches for it. If you have a 2204 and you want to use all four bolt holes, we, we usually just use two only because it makes it easier to swap real quick, but you will have the... Um, possibility of, of bending the 
the motor in a crash because you only have two mounting points, but I've never had that happen, but it is a possibility that it happened. These arms are pretty wide. It protects a lot of the motors that are out there. Um, but again, just be aware that without having all four, you could. And if you need to, then I would just drill those out and then you have access to all four of your bolt holes. Um, now with this frame, um, you're gonna have your back wall here that also adds support. So when you do have your top mount battery, if you do get into a crash with the battery on top, so I'm trying to do this with one hand. So if you do get in a crash, the this is gonna also help keep these protected. Um, it is a thin plate to keep it light, so we've added strength with other uh, other components. Now, just be aware that we have seen some of the PDBs and stuff like that that are out there on the market that have pins that might come back and they'll protrude into this wall. Um, that's just something that we're just not going to be able to prevent. So you'll just have to improvise whether you direct solder straight to that PDB or if you just don't use this wall. But again, just be aware that if you don't use this wall and you do get into a, a crash where the battery is going to land first, you're putting a lot of stress in this area here that this would make up for if it was there. But um, just be alarmed that that could happen. Now, coming back to the front of the frame, you've got your camera here, your camera plates. Now this is for the HS 1177 or uh, 1178, which is the same camera with different lenses. The 77 has the 2.8 um, millimeter lens and the, um, 78 has a, a 2.1 millimeter lens, so depending on what um, view field of view you want, that's going to be the camera that you choose. And then you know you put this on, and it's going to have the slits for the top, and then it's also got the cutout for your camera. Now, what we've done, and I don't have a camera here with me, I don't think. Oh, here we go. Let's get this one here. Oh, maybe not. That one's soldered in. No, I don't have a camera to show you. But anyways, these holes here are for your camera position. Um, if you need more angle, then you can move it more forward, and you'll be able to tilt that camera more upright. Uh, if you move it back, you'll be limited by that, and if you move it back, you'll be limited by it. Now, also, the other thing to keep in mind are we kept these holes kind of small, only because all of the camera cases are different. Some cameras are bigger, some of them are smaller. So what we did was we went with the smaller versions that we were able to find and cut these holes to fit those. That way, if you have the bigger version, you can just open this hole up a little bit to make it fit better. If you have the smaller version, you're not worrying about the camera flopping around. Because like we all know, it's easier to make a hole bigger than it is to make it smaller. Now. The other thing that you'll notice when you do have a camera in there is that the camera will make this wider than it than it is when it's just uh, stand when there is nothing in there. So these two uh, prongs or uh, slits are going to sit out a little bit more. So when you put the top plate on, you're going to have to pinch the you'll have to pinch these together a little bit and what we did that for was to allow some more compression around the camera case and that'll help the camera to, to not slip around while you're flying or during a crash uh, a lot of times what happens is the camera will hit something will happen and the camera gets pushed down or the constant movement of it being pushed down loosens up these screws so like I said You'll just have to push these together, and what that's going to do is add a lot more um, pressure on that camera and not allow it to, to slide up and down. Um, the next thing is that I'll point out is the flight controller and PDB area. So what I have here is our new PDB. I'm going to put that in first. So we have these nuts, that's going to keep your PDBs from touching the frame, so you don't have to worry about that shorting out. 
So you'd put the PDB on, then you have enough screw here to use your standoffs. Let me put the camera down here. So I didn't tighten that screw so it's not catching. I just had to put them on. And then you've got your last one here. Now what we did was we made we made these standoffs custom. So these are 11 millimeter standoffs. The reason we did that is because there's again there's a lot of variables of PDBs that are out there. Some have big BECs on them. Uh, some like the um, Red Rotor RC uh, OSD has some bigger caps and some pins on them. Also, these have pins, so if you do want to use some right angle pins, uh, basically 11 millimeters is what we found to clear 95% of the PDBs and OSD PDBs that we found on the market. So you've got plenty of space separating your flight controller from from there. And then from that, you're going to go ahead and put your flight controller on. Um, this is a standard Nades Revision 5 or Ninja 32. Obviously, you'd want that to be clocked so you have access to your USB. Uh, again, the only thing that I would pay, pay close attention to is when you're clocking stuff is if this was to be clocked this way and you didn't direct solder your receiver pins, well, they're going to hit the that wall. So you just want to make sure that when you're putting this in for your final fitment, that you put it in a spot that you're going to have access to this wall because this wall does make a difference for strength. Once you have that, you have four more nylon nuts that are going to hold the flight controller on. I'm going to lose that my way for now. Oh, of course. Anyways, you get the idea. You're going to put the flight controller on. Spin your nut on there. Get all your components installed. Your camera will be installed. It'll be soldered to the board. You'll have your video transmitter on one side. You'll have your um, receiver on the other side. And then you can put your top plate on. And that should just slide right on. Uh, put, make sure those slits are in. Um, grab the leftover of the smaller screws. And then you'll put those in all of the proper spots for... for the um, top plate. Put that one on. All right, I'm not gonna put the rest of them on because it's the same process. Um, that's pretty much gonna be the 210 of the Torker. The, um, then you have your SMA hole here. Now, this is also made a little bit tight so that you might have to um, maybe open it up a little bit, but some of the SMAs just out of tolerances will, will fit right into that hole. Um, but there you have it. That's the quickest and easiest um, build assembly that you'll get with it. You'll notice there's a couple left open holes here. Those are just for future projects that we had. We wanted to start developing GoPro mounts and things like that for the front of the um, frame. So we just left two holes there for now and so that we have an area that we can use to develop with later. Um, also, you can get to um, great3d.com. They've already made us a, a GoPro mount um, that you can get off of their web page. I think they're like 15 bucks, 10 bucks or something like that. I don't know. Um, but they go right on there. It's already um, notched also so that you don't lose any angle for your um, FPV camera, but then you can still get those videos that you want. Um, the last thing that you'll have is you'll have some foam. You can use this for your battery. It just helps it not slip when it's on there. And then obviously the U-Bad strap will go around it. Now, the one thing that I have had asked to me is that these aren't wide enough to fit the Velcro strap and a battery. Well, these aren't made for your battery hold down. That's not what those were meant for. Those were meant for holding components on to the bottom of the top plate if you needed to, uh, if it wasn't going to fit on this wall or whatever reason you couldn't use this wall. That's what these slits are for. 
they're not for a battery strap. The frame is narrow enough that the battery sitting on there, you wrapping that with the Velcro strap, it's gonna be, this is a, this is a one, uh, 1800 battery, but you'll see it's, it's wide enough that you don't need those slits. The, the frame itself is what's gonna hold the battery to the, um, to the frame. So, um, I wouldn't worry much about these slits if you don't need them for components. That's, that's what they're there for though. So if you have any questions, you can hit us up on Facebook or you can open up the help desk ticket, which there's a, if you go to the contact us on the webpage, it'll take you to the help desk and you're going to open up a ticket and we'll be able to get back to you over there. So I hope this helped you, uh, get your, uh, torquer in the air and, uh, we look forward to, um, more innovations and, uh, getting more, more of you guys up in the air with our product.